Welcome to the Boys and Girls Show. I'm Jane Slater, joined by my co-host here, Bobby Belt. And week 10 and a new opponent can't come soon enough after that rough loss, 30-16 at home to the Denver Broncos. And when you look at this uh, Atlanta Falcons team, Mike McCarthy had said so often this year that they spend more time on the tape, which is funny to me. They spent so much time on the Broncos tape and then it turned out the way that it did. Yeah. But they did that because they described it as an uncommon opponent. Not an uncommon opponent to so many people on this coaching staff and the players. Let's talk real quick about some of the connections. Absolutely. I mean, you've got, between the coaching staff and the players, you've got five people that were in, were in Atlanta just last year. Um, so, I mean, you've got on the coaching staff, Dan Quinn, obviously, your defensive coordinator, your passing game coordinator on defense, uh, Joe Witt Jr., um, Aiden Durde is is what we're going with on the pronunciation there until I figure out for sure. Aiden Durde, the defensive line coach. And I there. go with that, Bobby, because I always think of the song Riding Durde. You're a big chameleon That's, how, fan. that's yeah. how I've kept it uh, in my – and I also think it's got a little bit of the British land. Aiden Durde. See, yeah, because you, yeah, you're in love with British culture. And then yes. you've got your uh, – the, the two defenders that you brought on this year who have contributed a lot, Keanu Neal and DeMonte Casey. So these are guys that uh, know that building well, know those, the guys on that side of the ball well. Um, and, and this is a team that Dallas has been familiar with in recent years. Um, this is actually, I mean, they, they played Dallas last year at AT&T Stadium. Um, you know, it looks like we're probably going to be without Tyron Smith again. And we all know that was One a historically <laughs> bad game yeah. against the Falcons when Tyron Smith missed and uh, Adrian Claiborne just destroyed Chaz Green um, and this is also going to be Dak Prescott's fourth game of his career against the Falcons and that's the most starts he's had in the regular season against a non-NFC East team so this will, he's never seen a team in the regular season as much as he has the Atlanta Falcons and so it's a uh, it's a team that everybody in this building seems to be pretty familiar with either from their own experiences over in that side or just uh, you know their experiences on the field the last three years or so. And look, it's a different team in the sense that Arthur Smith is a hell of a coach. You saw what he did with the Tennessee Titans. I still think that they're trying to figure th some things out. Doesn't help that they don't have a guy like Calvin Ridley this year uh, who stepped away from the game with some mental health issues. But we'll, we'll, we'll break down uh, this game in terms of they may not have Calvin Ridley at wide receiver. The Cowboys look like they're going to be getting possibly Michael Gallup back, yep. which would be huge. Uh, and then we'll talk about this Atlanta defense that has been struggling. But real quick, we want to know from you, who are you picking? Before we even deep dive into this, what's your gut instinct on this one? You got the Cowboys. Go ahead and type C for that. Or the Falcons. We're making it easy here. Just type an F. Uh, you F are for watch Falcons or for you know yeah. your, your reaction to if they lose this game again. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, so let's deep dive into this a little bit. Uh, let's start with the Falcons' offense. Matt Ryan under center. What can we expect from this team, particularly when we saw this defense give up 30 points this season, their most since week one? A little shocking uh, for this Cowboys team that we thought had things figured out. Dan Quinn saying that they've got shit to fix. Yeah. I it, loved the matter of fact about <laughs> it. Uh, but if there's any guy you got to think is going to be motivated this week to come out of the gate with a better game, it's got to be Dan Quinn, who was uh, let go last season after they went, what, 0-5 to start yeah, the it was season? Yeah, it, it was a rough start. The one game they, they really probably should have won was the one here at AT&T Stadium, uh, if not for that watermelon kick on, on the onside that Dallas was able to, to bounce back. But... Yeah, I mean, this is uh, flat out, uh, and we'll get to the defensive side of the ball here in a sec, but I mean, the Falcons on defense are, are really bad this year um, in just about every single way, whether it be against the run or against the pass. I mean, the, the Cowboys should have some good opportunities there um, with the run game bouncing back, with Michael Gallup coming back. Um, I mean, I think you can do a lot of really uh, intriguing things with Gallup, Wilson, Cooper, Lamb. Um, another week for everybody to get healthier. Um, and, and so I think that... When you look at the Falcons' offense, Matt Ryan is obviously a guy that um, you know has been around this league for a long time and has performed at a high level, has you know uh, made a Super Bowl. Uh, but that's also a guy that Dan Quinn knows very well and and probably you know uh, knows his weaknesses better than just about any defensive coach in the league, um, just from his time there. Um, but I mean, Matt Ryan having a good season this year, uh, you know, not his best, but I mean he, he's up near you know a, a hundred passer rating. Uh, 15 touchdowns, six interceptions, nearly 70% completions. Um, the rushing offense is hilarious because their leading rusher over there is Cordero Patterson, <laughs> um, who has been just a gadget player his entire career. I guess you can't really call him a receiver or a running back. Um, but Cordero Patterson could be a guy, especially after you saw 
how much the Cowboys struggled um, to finish plays and, and, and make tackles. And, and after we know some of the issues uh, last year and, and at times this year with, you know, over pursuit and, and getting the right angles, a guy who's as fast and as shifty as Cordero Patterson um, it could be a real problem for them. Leads the team in rushing, second on their team in receiving yards with 459. He's got five touchdowns. So that's a guy that they're going to have to game plan for. Um, you know, you may see a, a matchup of who the Cowboys got in the first round versus who Jerry lusted after in the first round. You might see some Micah Parsons on Kyle Pitts a little bit. Um, and, and Pitts and Parsons are really close. Um, they have the same agent. They trained together before the draft. So, uh, I mean, I imagine that's going to be a nice little competitive thing for Parsons and, and potentially gets his competitive juices going. So One of my least favorite storylines in the offseason, though, that everyone just thought because Jerry vocalized uh, – his love affair with Kyle Pitts, that that was instinctively going to be the guy that they go with. Yeah, I mean, I, I think if he f somehow miraculously had fallen to them, especially if the corners had gone off the board, maybe he goes, you know, shoot from the hip Jerry, and, and they just go, ah, he's too good. This is C.D. Lamb again. We need to go for it. Um, but that I mean, would ultimately, have been a terrible decision. I, I mean, I, Micah Parsons. I, now, I think you could make an argument right now when you look at this offensive line, Bobby, that maybe Rashawn Slater might have been a nice piece to add. Slater definitely could have could have been good. And I mean, you know, you saw last week why the Cowboys were so high on a guy like Sertan as well because of the way he played. Um, but ultimately, I don't think there's any need to feel bad about the pick that you made nah. or, or, or have any sort of. Um, you know, because this is what he looks like his rookie year. Can you imagine what he's going to look like in year two, year three, year four? I mean, we had the stats earlier in the week. You know, he had those 10 tackles and those three tackles for loss in the game, the two and a half sacks. Um, Micah, that was actually the second consecutive game where he's had at least 10 tackles mm. and three tackles for loss. The only other guy who's ever done that period, not just as a rookie, period, in a, in a season, have back-to-back -back games like that is Junior Seau, the Hall of Fame linebacker, wow. which, is, which is funny because George Edwards, who you know, helps out with the linebackers and coaches them, just a couple weeks ago, a guy who's worked with Junior Seau had said that was a guy that Parsons kind of reminded him of a little bit, was, was Seau. And so, um, Isn't you know, it crazy when you think about, like I've asked – how they essentially have utilized Micah. And I've heard, you know, these lofty comparisons about how they see him and they want to use him. Uh, the Packers guy, help me out. Why am I drawing? Clay Matthews. Point? Clay Matthews, yep. long blonde hair, Thor. Uh, that's who they had described. They would use him as sort of this hybrid linebacker. DeMarcus Ware. Now, we're not making any comparisons to Marcus Ware, but, Ware, but thinking that he was good enough to play this 3-4 hybrid linebacker that we saw from DeMarcus Ware. So, so much that you're getting out of him and his rookie season, I, I agree with you. I mean, I think that that was the best pe best pick, but it's always fun to do this hindsight's 2020 because in sure. years past, there were certainly a lot of guys you would have liked to have taken in that first round uh, that you didn't grab. Um, let's just also talk about Michael Gallup's return. Cedric Wilson did not have a great week. I mean, Amari Cooper didn't drop the ball that went right, yeah, I mean, no right one to his did. chest. <laughs> uh, but I tend to think as they figure out this offensive line, because it doesn't sound like uh, I reached out to someone this morning that maybe we won't see Tyron Smith until maybe the Kansas City Chiefs game. So not this weekend, but the next. I don't know if it favors a strong run game because I didn't see there uh, being a lot of holes uh, necessarily for Zeke to run through. There wasn't a lot of gaps there. Uh, I also felt that, you know, especially when this team gets behind, you're forced to throw the ball and you've got some capable receivers uh, in CeeDee Lamb, Michael Gallup, Amari Cooper, and, and even Cedric Wilson. So I'll be interested to see how they use uh, all four of these receivers really uh, this week as you as we look to get Michael Gallup back, that has not been confirmed, but it seems like all signs are pointing that way. Yeah, it seems likely that, you know, uh, this will be the, the week that we get them back uh, or, or get uh, Michael Gallup back. And that's going to be a, a big boost to an offense that's coming off as flat a game as they have. Um, but I also think it's good that, you know, there's, there's not a lot of pressure on Michael Gallup to come in here and, you know, be all world. And I don't think there's a lot of stress on him to feel like I got to come in and I, I got to perform really high. Because no, the stress is it's a contract year. Well, there's that. <laughs> but, but I mean, you, I think you've got, you know, Cedric Wilson has played as well as he has. That's a, a confidence builder. Of, okay, we can ease our way into this if we need to. Um, Noah Brown has, you know, played better this year as a receiver than he has uh, in years past. They're actually using him more as a weapon. I think he's actually got more 20 yard receptions this season than he had in his entire career combined heading into this year. Um, and then even Malik Turner 
a guy who had that block and then had those oh. two touchdown receptions in, in you know garbage time. And so he's a uh, uh, you know I think that the Gallup the Gallup addition will be big for them and allows them to do even more creative things. I will say that you know you don't want to have uh, you know you don't want to be missing Tyron Smith, but I was just trying to look this up here. Uh, it looks like uh, Atlanta is, I mean, they've only got 11 sacks on this season. Um, and so they've, they've really struggled, um, to get after the passer. And so uh, a better chance for the offensive line to kind of coalesce and, and hopefully have less pressure on them. Um, but ultimately, I mean, you were, <laughs> the Broncos had also just traded Von Miller and they didn't have Malik Reed and, and the Cowboys still struggled blocking there. So, um, maybe a good week to, you know, go out there, run those four receiver sets keep Zeke in to chip and, and help out uh, Terrence Steele if you need to and, and try and push things vertically. I think the Cowboys realize they don't want to have to play their defense behind very much. Absolutely um, not. And, and so I think that they're going to look to kind of jump out and, and get some points on the board early this week. Give us some points on the board. And we Please. are talking about subscribing uh, right there. More videos from the Boys and Girl Club. Boys and Girls Show, rather. You can join our club where we talk about the Cowboys every week here on the Cowboys Report. Turn on those notifications. But again, it's youtube.com forward slash Cowboys TV. All right, week 10, we are at essentially the midway point mm -hmm. uh, for this Cowboys team. What do you make of this team? So, I mean, I think that it, it's funny the way your expectations change as the year goes along. Everybody was talking about after, you know, the potential moral victory of hanging with the Buccaneers. And, oh, maybe you can kind of hang your hat on that a little bit. It, and now you look back at that and go, man, we should have won that game. And, you know, they, they should have started the season undefeated. And, and, and so it, it's funny the way the expectations change and, and how things, uh, you know, adapt. But I think if you looked at where were you the opening week of the season or, or during that practice week leading into the Tampa Bay game, um, I think if you told people you were going to be 6-2 and two heading into the Falcons game, they'd be elated. And, and, they, and they wouldn't care how the combination of wins came, how you got there, if you were winning pretty, if you were winning ugly. 6-2 and two surpassed everybody's expectations. And you're doing it with injuries again this season. Yeah. Injuries to your quarterback, injuries to your offensive line. That's what stands out to me. And even when this team is down, what, 30-16, I mean, you're going into the fourth quarter, you're looking at getting shut out by this team. The touchdowns didn't matter, but to me, it still showed fight in this team. And remember last year, there was a lot of give up. There was a lot of give up, specifically, I think, on the defensive side of the ball, but, but on offense at times too. But I think that they're responding in a way, you know, when the Eagles won the Super Bowl in 2017, losing their tackle, they had so many season-ending injuries, they lost their quarterback uh, before the playoffs. And, and when they won, I remember that was a point a lot of people had was you'd never see the Cowboys do that. You would never see the Cowboys bounce back from that. If things are not going exactly right, then they're not playing well. Uh, but, I mean, this is a year where they've had, you know, Zach Martin miss a game due to, the, due to COVID. They've had players spotty missing games because of the COVID list. They've had injuries to Demarcus Lawrence and, and Michael Gallup. And I think if you had listed and said just, look, these are the type of injuries you're going to have. These are the type of hits you're going to have uh, due to the COVID list. And you're going to be six and two heading into the Atlanta game. Everybody would have taken that. And let's be honest, they should have lost the Minnesota game. I think a lot of people were expecting that to be a loss, and it's again such the Cowboys thing to do sure. to get that win. It and so, but the defense I think did we, step up and play well that day. Agree, but I think the point I'm trying to make here is that you were expecting a loss in yes. one of those games. Yes, and, and I think that you know it's. I actually wasn't surprised that they lost this the one. the the change. Well, I mean, look, there's just a lot of bad luck for the Cowboys with, uh, you know, our, our people going to Cabo. Um, because, you know, we had the Romo-Cabo <laughs> playoff game, Zeke going to train in Cabo, and then, and then you know, they have issues. So, I mean, like, you just continue. I did it, didn't you I? You continue the Cabo fault. jinx, yeah. Um, yeah. And so I think that, uh, you know, it's now that expectations have changed, when you look at the second half of the season, you know, it, even though they're at a place where it's like, wow, this is better than anybody anticipated, expectations have changed. And, and you need to respond well from losing to Denver. Um, you realistically, you won the games, and so you, you don't hold against them, but you realistically lo are looking at the last three games they've played. New England, they trailed for most of the game. It was a fourth down snatch from Cedric Wilson that kept the drive alive and even got them into overtime. Um, you had the Minnesota game without Dak Prescott where they easily could have lost that game. They have to you know, score the go-ahead touchdown in the final minute of the game, and then you get thumped by Denver you realistically could have lost all three of these games recently. And so I think it's important to come out, reestablish yourself, 
against the Falcons this week. Get a big victory here because you're also about to enter the most difficult stretch of your schedule remaining. After Atlanta, you go on the road against Kansas City. The Chiefs are still the Chiefs, no matter how they've been playing. And they Arrowhead, are, Arrowhead I, is still Arrowhead. I can't make sense of the Chiefs this season. No, it's bizarre. It, what's happening to Patrick Mahomes is very bizarre to yeah. me. And, uh, and, and I mean, become a turnover machine, essentially. But again, when we talk about you know, regressing to the mean or doing sorts of things, this is not going to last forever, and you don't want Patrick Mahomes to start clicking again against you. And so, I mean, you got the Chiefs on the road coming up. Then you get to come home and play the Raiders, but the Raiders have proven to be a talented team, and you're going to be playing them on a short week. Yeah, but, I mean, think about it. They just sent the cornerback back. Damon Arnett. Yeah, they've had their off-the-field issues. And then they had the wide receiver. You look, lost your coach this I, year. I think, I think if there's anybody. But you got Rick, Rich Bisacci and Rod say, Marinelli. I, I think if you talk it's to like people. like Cowboys West. I think if you talk to people around the league, Basacha is a guy who can really help save that culture and Agreed. keep them on task. I think there's nobody guys ge- like really believe in more than a guy like Rich Basacha. So Raiders on a short week. Uh, then you go into the Dome against the Saints. And, and not just Dome. It's, it's a Thursday night football primetime game. That place is going to be loud. Um, and then but even again, though, I don't know what to make of that team. I mean, you now, never is know, Trevor Simeon going to be your quarterback in three weeks or are they going to go back to Taysom Hill? Yeah, I mean, you, it, but I mean, still, you would look at that and say that's still a, you know, do that's they a go team, and get OBJ team, and add that, him to the roster? <laughs> that's a team. That's that's a team that did what you couldn't do. They beat the Buccaneers, um, and so I, I mean, you got the Saints. Then you've got even as much as Washington has struggled and New York has struggled. Weeks fourteen and fifteen, you get back to back road games um, against division opponents. So I think this is the. It's key for you to lock things up and play really well against Atlanta because you've got four road games here in out of your next five and the only home game you get is a short week on thanksgiving against a good raiders team and so this will be a, a i think a big week for them to step up and play well um because i think they need that momentum heading into this five game stretch i just look at a guy like Dak prescott and i've said this to people uh a lot he is just such a uh almost like tom brady is in the sense that bet against me put my back against the wall chip on a shoulder bulletin board material I think that this Broncos game was perfect for this team, and I really have no doubt that they're going to turn this around. I know people, when I came back, and of course I'm listening to sports talk this week, the sky is falling, and I get it. I just really feel like this is going to be an outlier game when we look back on the season. But old takes exposed. Feel free to come for me if I'm wrong on this. I just truly believe that this is not one that I'm putting too much stock in. No. But they've got to they've got to get this offensive line. Every time this team is at a problem, it starts with the offensive line. Yeah, and I, I think that this is a week for them to clean things up and really get their momentum again. And and as you say, Dak is the Michael Jordan meme, and I took that personally. And so hopefully he takes that personally and, and builds into the second half. All right, we're gonna take it personally if you don't subscribe. So go ahead and right there, we've made it very simple for you. YouTube.com forward slash cowboys TV. Let's hope, Bobby, that when we chat again about this Cowboys team, that we are talking about very different things versus a wholesale fire sale <laughs> after that one. Hopefully a bunch of Cowboys fans will jump back on the bandwagon because I got the sense a lot of people were, were jumping off. They, uh, they pulled the parachutes. Uh, but again, I, I truly think that this one is just going to be one of those outlier games and they turn this thing around. But we will see you next time. We appreciate you tuning in. Bobby, any final thoughts? Here's to seven and two.